Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Jessica Henry Gray and I'm excited to have you back with me today. Today I'm out here braving the cold again and I just had to capture this beautiful sunshine on this fresh white snow before it's all gone. It's late February and I thought it's not going to be very many days left. So I'm going to show you how to plein air paint this thawing river that I have here. I'm in the Rocky River area right outside of Cleveland, Ohio. And so I am going to paint this today and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. I really appreciate it and check out the links below. I think you're going to enjoy some of the upcoming workshops I have coming up. All right, you guys, so let's jump in. So I'm going to demonstrate to you today how to paint this river here. It's all frozen over, but there's some thawing happening just kind of behind me. And I love the way that the sky is blue and there's this white crisp snow. And I just love the, that the river is starting to thaw. So I really wanted to capture that today. All right, so let's jump in and we'll get going. Okay, first things first, I get my tripod set up. Paper towels down below. I got them on a bungee cord. And this is my open box M easel. It has, um, that's the back. This is the front. I love this. This is the smallest size they have. My brush is here, the canister. Basically two, four, six, eight. This is my pillbox sorter lid. I cut the lid off and uh, paint's ready to go. I just have to put the paint in there. But you can get that ready ahead of time at home. Today I'm working on a nine by 12 panel that I've already uh, uh, toned on it. I'm trying to avoid odorless mineral spirits. So today I have in my canister, instead of odorless mineral spirits, I put some linseed oil in. So we'll see how that goes for cleaning my brushes. And since I already toned the canvas, I did a couple days ago, because I wanted to see, I put a really thin, thin layer of paint and a little linseed oil, put it on thin, rubbed it off and let it dry. So I'm experimenting. So I've got titanium white, had yellow medium, yellow ochre, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Phthalo Green, Lizard and Crimson, or Permanent, whatever you like. I really want to zero in on these beautiful thawed ice and snow down in here. And this painting's pretty much gonna be pretty monochromatic. Um, so there won't be a lot of really interesting color mixing going on on my palette. I 
Okay. So I think that that back composition will allow me to focus on the passages in here where we're getting the most interesting saw and activity happening. I like my composition to really have a sense of direction, that it's all focusing in on that area, leading the eye back to this passage back in there. All right, so when that's in place, I'm gonna start from the sky going down, taking some ultramarine blue and some white. And because it's cold out, I'm gonna thin it down with linseed oil. I don't need very much of the sky color, so I'm going to pretty much be quiet now the rest of this video and do the rest in voiceover back. All right, so now I am mixing up just a neutral gray. When I squint at the woods far away back there, um, instead of looking at all the trees, I'm looking at the overall color and value of the woods as I see them. And it's more like a grayish taupe and um, especially be before the leaves come out. I'm looking at um, the color underneath and the depth of the woods. It's sort of a darker, um, a little more uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna down there. And then as the um, trees thin toward the top, it gets up to be a lighter um, grayish taupe. And so I'm just massing in that forest and then I'll come through with a little bit more definition for the tree trunks. So laying down the snow as I see it back in through the trees, I'm not worried about the in individual trees yet, but rather what the snow looks like um, on the forest floor. And I'm, while I have that color, I'm putting it a little bit in the foreground and elsewhere. So using the flat chiseled uh, side of my brush, I'm mixing up sort of a, just a little bit lighter value than the gray beyond it. And I'm picking out some of the trees to be um, a little softer, more neutral color. You can see in the um, photo inserted here that some of them are just sort of a lighter value than the background. And so I'm just popping in a few and some are even a little bit more intense as they pick up some more of the light, the ones that are closer to the edge of the forest. Um, so I'm just using a little bit of yellow ochre and white, a touch of burnt sienna and blue to sort of make it an off cream color that I see in the trunks. And uh, of course, just using the edge. Um, instead of drawing the line straight down for the tree, I like to make small horizontal strokes. I think it gives the line a little bit more character. And then I can also control the value on that line of the tree trunk a little bit better. So it's a little more intense toward the top of the tree and um, it gets darker toward the bottom, just depending on where the light's hitting it. Sometimes that's reversed. Um, okay, so the bank of the river has sort of a stone wall, and I don't want the whole painting to be about that stone wall, and you can see in my photo that it's very dark, but as it curves and turns away, it got lighter. And so I wanna draw the, the eye to the back of the painting, but it, the main focus of the painting itself is sort of in the thawing of the um, ice toward the front. So that background there, while I want the viewer to feel like they can travel to the back of the painting, I don't want it to be distracting and have sharp lines and strong contrast. So I'm keeping the wall a softer, more neutral gray. And then the snow that has fallen on the river as it slips around behind the um, curve here, I want that to be a little bit cooler, um, some purple shadows because the hill in the foreground is casting a shadow over that bend in the river. And if I had made it a bright white contrasting snow, it would have had um, a larger um, effect of contrast, which would have drawn the eye. And so always be thinking about where you're drawing the, the viewer to look in your painting. The eye is always drawn to the area of the greatest contrast. And so in this case, um, that background really wasn't it. It's all about this melting ice in the foreground and then the directional lines of the ice point us to the back. Um, basically suggesting you're free to travel back there, but the real show is up here. And so I'm um, mapping in now. Um, I've got my darks 
firmly in place of where they're going to go for the darkest darks being that the canvas was already middle tone um, that all was established but i'm putting in a few more middle tone values as i'm going along and i loved that blue and sometimes before your lighting changes you have to secure um, exactly those color notes that you see before the light shifts so that's why i grabbed those blues um, so early in the painting and i'm taking a little bit of burnt sienna ultramarine blue and i know you can't really see it but there's some yellow ochre in there for my dark values when i squint it down at that bank um, there's always variations in the bank as you look out there and you can see well it's a little different but you need to take that and translate it onto your canvas to make the best composition on your canvas and you use nature as a reference um, but you do not have to be solely committed and sold out to its its exactness As I squint down at the forest that's closer to me on this sloping hill, um, I'm seeing that it is a little bit warmer than the forest in the background. That background forest is more cool, like a cooler gray. But as it comes up to the front, um, I'm seeing a little bit more warmth. So I added some more yellow ochre and little burnt sienna into the forest mass. And now I'm building up the layers of the forest, putting in some darker trees, um, and then I'll put in a little bit of pine trees and things as I see them. And then over the top of that, I'll build in more trees, pile up more snow, and then more highlights. So there's little steps along the way to build up um, a passage of forest. And so you'll see that sort of develop here. Putting a little more snow on the bank, I'm more or less working my way from the background to the foreground of this painting. And again, capturing the light before it changes is critical when you're working on a still life. And one of the problems that I hear from so many people is they just run out of time and the light changed. Well, there's all kinds of things you can do to be efficient in your effort um, plein air painting. And part of that is um, capturing the light right away when you see it. Get your drawing in and then go for the light, those color notes. Because that's really why we're doing the plein air painting in the first place, just to capture that fleeting light that you really can't get from photos. You can even see when I insert the photo into this video that it's not the same as what you're seeing out there. <laughs> it's the, you don't have the blue shadows that are there in real life. The photo just doesn't catch that and it kind of flattens things, makes the darks too flat, the whites all washed out. Um, but in real life, you see so many different variances and changes. So I do encourage you to work from plein air as much as possible. And then um, while you're out there doing it, capture the light. Go for the light right away. And um, as I worked on the snow, I had to isolate. Where is the brightest patch of snow in my um, visual landscape here? And using that one little um, sunspot of white as my gauge for the highest, brightest white, um, everything else had to be a little bit less than that. So when you're painting whites, there's so many different values and subtle changes. It's just like painting blacks. The, the um, degrees of changes is almost just sometimes a difference between cool and warm. And by that, I mean sometimes the white is a more bluer tint, cool, and sometimes the white has a little bit more of a yellowish tint to it, um, tending towards the warm. Um, and now, uh, as I'm working through here, I'm laying in a nice, flat, horizontal feeling of the snow in the river, being careful of my first brush marks that I laid down. I've, they were important for directing the viewer, but I'll kind of evolve those as I'm going along. And I want the banks of the snow as they come down into that melted spot to almost remind me of a cat's paw. And the, that curvature and um, as the ice approaches the water there's sort of a yellow ochre flavor to it uh, um, still ice kind of that muddy ice and uh, still frozen but um, thawing so you see some of the darkness of the water underneath it and that's what I was mostly trying to capture in this entire painting that frozen thawing effect Now I'm not really showing very much of my palette in this video because for the most part I'm working with a very limited um, 
set of colors. I know that I normally work with a limited palette, as, as you know, but I really haven't used the um, phthalo green. And for those violets in the shadows, it's a little bit of alizarin crimson. Other than that, it's essentially just the white, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and some yellow ochre. For the sunspots, where the snow is picking up the really intense white, I have the smallest bit of cadmium yellow. So that's, I mean, it's just a very limited palette. But I like that too because it's another, um, well, secret <laughs> to being efficient. Have um, a limited palette, know your palette, know what your colors are going to do for you. And uh, you become like a mus musician with a um, set of keys, your piano keys. You just know what each one is going to do for you. So I'm coming back through here now and putting in a few notes um, uh, into the snow, just a little more interest. And then, of course, my focal area is this bank and the thawing river. So this has to really be the part that um, does most of the singing for me. And um, as I'm laying down these patches of white, it's still not the whitest uh, white that I can get on this painting. It's sort of an off-white, and uh, I'm indicating the curvature of the banks of snow by using my brushwork to help define those patches as they come down the hill. One of the secrets to having um, a, a painting that feels fresh is to put the paint down and not keep messing with it. Every time you fiddle around with a brush stroke, a piece of paint on the canvas, you break down that feeling of freshness. And I know that sometimes when you put a brush stroke down, you have to soften the edges or do what you need to. But um, if you can, just put it down and step back and look at it, put another piece down, Really, all a painting is are just little pieces of paint that you put next to each other. And then by having that mindset, you keep it looking fresh and crisp and not muddy. A lot of people are asking me, how do I keep my painting from getting muddy looking? Well, this is one way. Put the piece of paint down, leave it alone. If you have to do a little bit, just do a little and then step back and look at it. Um, but you want to just keep it from getting fussy. Um, and also, I'm wiping my brush off all the time. In my other hand is my paper towel, and you can see anytime my brush leaves the canvas, it's either wiping the brush off or going to the palette. Um, but just uh, that, that is one way. You just There's sort of a laziness that takes over when people start painting, and they don't want to wipe their brush off very often, or they don't want to go get more paint, so they just use what's on their brush or what's already on the canvas. And that's sort of a recipe for disaster <laughs> when you want a fresh look to your painting, you have to keep going back and you have to try mixing up a new color or try a different value or whatever, but um, just keep plugging along. Okay, and now you can see here I've taken a little bit of the cadmium yellow with the white and you can see now by comparison how really intense that white can be and how with the really really delicate handling the other whites are just a, barely a step down but by doing that and taking the extra time to make that comparison uh, and having that sense of relationship most intense white and then the scale going down you're able to get that stronger impact of sunlight people ask how do you capture that sun this is how keep your other colors quieter and neutral and save the most intense spot for your brightest whites and that's or your darkest darks that's one of the ways that you would do that Now, sometimes I take a clean, dry brush and I go back through and I lose some edges of some of the brushwork where I feel that it is distracting. And so we're always talking about edges. And what do you mean by edges? An edge will, it does a couple things when you um, have an edge on an object or a brush stroke. Sometimes you can use a sharp edge to your advantage to help direct the viewer throughout your painting. For the most part, edges are soft on items. A sharp edge will convey a feeling of stop 
um, like a, um, a leaf or a curl of paper or a flower petal or whatever, um, for the most of the objects that you're ever going to paint are going to have a softer edge on them. A tree trunk, an apple, a face, whatever. They're pretty soft and they show, a soft edge shows continuity, form, and roundness. And so um, I try to keep the option of softening brushworks. That's why I like painting a la prima because it's not too difficult to go back through and soften edges. And so that's what I do occasionally is I'll wipe off my brush or get a dry brush and go through and soften brush strokes, especially in the background where I don't want the viewer to be looking. I'm putting in some darker masses for what will be, I'm suggesting as the pine trees. And you can make a nice, great pine tree color with um, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue. Uh, with a teeny bit of cadmium yellow, you get a really great pine color. Just depends on the pine tree. Some are bluer and um, some are very dark. Um, so that's just what I'm focusing on in that area. And now just like when I painted the forest in the background, I'm varying my layers of trees. Some are dark and some are light. As they come over, um, sort of emerging out of shadows, they get lighter. So I'm working on some of the um, brush and things that are in the snow is that the bank cracks and goes down to the water. And again, I'm using the chiseled edge of my brush, just a nice sharp edge using small horizontal brush strokes to um, define these trees. And I, you can see that um, I'm able to vary the value of the tree trunk. So they're a little bit lighter at the top and darker toward the bottom. But I will at one point in here take some of that snow and sort of um, drag it up the trunk just so that there's some interest there as well. Now to really make the trees look like they're sitting in the snow, they have to have their blue shadows too. So I'm looking yeah. at the angle of the shadows as they come off the tree and they're, everything's pointing toward the bend in the stream. So that just kind of works to help um, move along my narrative. And uh, so the shadows I'm putting in with some of the blue indicating that those trees are deep in that snow. And then just adding a little bit more detail, some sunlight as it peeks through the forest, little spots of white into the forest and more information as the snow crumbles and breaks down the bank. So some finishing touches include just um, a few more little highlights to help with bringing the eye into the painting and leading back. I saw some 
dents in the snow that um, just some brighter white that helped to soften some edges and helped to just lead the eye in. I thought that they were important. Um, and then I come back through with a few little dabs here and there just to um, help things along. And then I take a palette knife and I'm scratching in some trees and some twigs just to wrap it up. So I wanted to thank you all for joining me and be sure to check out the links below. I've got some awesome plein air workshops coming up as well as some drawing and um, some other things that you may want to look at. All right, I hope to see you at one of them coming up and this is the finished painting. Thanks everyone for joining me. Bye-bye. Well, that wraps this up. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Be sure to check out the links below on my upcoming workshops and uh, this painting is available, will be up on my website. All right you guys, I will see you next time and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. Join me in Florida for four days of fantastic plein air painting in one of the most beautiful beaches in Florida. Aqua turquoise waters, white sugary sand beaches, perfect temperature. It is the prime location for plein air painting. Painting on these silky white sand beaches is just such a privilege and a treat. Um, just mastering the color in that water is just, it's a joy and I'm want to encourage you to sign up. We've got a few spots still left for the workshop this year in April. We talk about values and composition in your plein air painting. Of course, this is an in-person workshop. This was, this workshop was in 2019. And, um, but as far as 2021 goes, we will be practicing more social distancing. Everybody enjoyed it. It was a reading and just had a great time. Join me in Charleston, South Carolina, plein air painting workshop. Um, very excited to paint in this one of the most beautiful cities in the entire nation. Rich in history, Charleston is full of color, energy, and a rare vitality. Three days of plein air painting capturing the city, land, and seascapes. I am so excited for this workshop. It is going to be a fantastic three days of painting in person in this look at the color of this it's absolutely beautiful city we're going to enjoy painting the beautiful beaches as well as the colorful cities my workshops are fun and we're going to keep it engaged um, in a lot of energy uh, we keep very safe in the workshops as well uh, in this season of covid um, everybody's wearing masks as it's appropriate but we are also outside and that helps with um, stopping the spread so I hope that you get to enjoy this one and look over it, and I hope to see you in South Carolina. Listed in the top 100 most beautiful beaches in the world by National Geographic, Cannon Beach is a joy to plein air paint. The Oregon beaches truly are one of my most favorite beaches in the world. The water is a stunning aqua, deep sapphire, velvety blue. It's just unlike anywhere else in the world with massive rocks and starfish, crashing waves. Um, there's an endless supply of things to paint. And uh, we had a wonderful time painting there this last October. Um, we kept very safe. COVID free. Uh, this is um, the group that joined us. We had a fantastic time and this is a, a wonderful opportunity to just study how to plein air paint. It's soothing and relaxing listening to the ocean waves while painting. It just sort of takes all your cares and washes them right back out to the sea. It's, it's just absolutely breathtaking, peaceful, ancient forests, mysterious um, they're just they have this intrigue that you don't find anywhere else in this country majestic beaches soaring cliffs makes Oregon a fascinating must on any plein air painters list out and uh, 
everywhere you find, everywhere you look is somewhere fantastic to paint. So I hope that you um, take a look at this one, follow the link for more information. I would love to meet you in Oregon this coming year. Throughout the course of our artistic journeys, we often have hundreds if not thousands of photographs of beautiful landscapes. And in this workshop, I want to teach you how to take those photos and turn them into beautiful landscape paintings. This is an online class and it is a four part session and we will go over painting from photos. I have four paintings that I will be doing a demo each day in the class. And in this painting, I will show you how to break down a composition from your photo. And if you have a plein air study, we can go over that, how to incorporate that into your um, painting in the studio, and then how to just work out the final result from your photo using the challenges that come with working from photos, values, color, distortions, and so forth. So in this class, I will demonstrate painting water, uh, painting trees. I'll demonstrate painting certain lighting effects that we often try to get in our paintings. And I'll also paint some sort of building or housing structure. I hope you can join me in this very informative online workshop later this year. This year is full but we are taking reservations for our workshop next year 2022 we are confirming and finalizing a date it will be in the summer of 2022 and this is exactly the format that it will be in for that year this year we're going to be touring france southern france will be in um, these beautiful areas we are i am painting at Le vieux cavan and um, it is a 10-day workshop all included except for your flight and a couple of meals all of the rest of your meals and your lodging and your tuition are all covered in this workshop we will be in the most stunning place here in the world as far as i'm concerned it is gorgeous and i cannot wait um, i hope that you can join me for 2022 to paint in these medieval villages um, and just gorgeous gorgeous areas to paint I am also adding as a special bonus a three day uh, trip to Paris. For more information on that, check out my links below on my workshop this year. I wish you the very best in your artistic endeavors and I do hope our paths cross at some time. Thank you all for your support and have a- Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful week and I will see you tomorrow when I put my new video up. Okay, bye-bye.